the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Leslie. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Thanks, Laura. Great to be here. So happy to have you back. So tell us what you've been up to. Oh, lots of things. Um, I just, well, constantly reading, right? So many books to get through. But on the blog, um, recently I published the romance book reading journal, which people can find on Amazon. So that was a huge milestone and um, so excited to have that up. Um, Constantly creating some new lists. And what else? Making my way through the romance book reading challenge. and. Yeah, having some fun. So, what is this month's challenge? What is this? What, which um, which kind of book are you reading this month? This month's challenge is Office Romance. Ooh. So, yes, and I'm going to totally blank on what is I am reading. Well, listening. I actually hardly ever listen to audiobooks, but um, mm-hmm. we re- recently went on vacation and we were in the car, so I'm listening to Always Only You by Chloe Lisa. Lee. Lisa. Lisa. Um, yeah, so I love hockey romance and the fact that, you know, he's a hockey player and she works for the team. I thought that would fit. So yes, Chloe's a good friend of mine. And so I'm so excited to be are discovering her series. It's like, it's a fun series to discover. Um, and she has a book coming out, a Shakespeare retelling, um, coming out with Berkeley next, next fall. So, which sounds really good. It's like fake relationship, but I think they're they're being placed together and they're in a fake relationship and they're like they realize that like they're been matched and they're like they don't want to they want to break up or some sort it looks it looks like a oh, lot sounds cute here. so it sounds yeah. good enough so but I really love <laughs> always on always only you I really love that book like um is it Frankie is a yes yeah. Francesca. Francesca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it's just like she's like so grumpy. <laughs> yeah, she is grumpy. We're in, and he's like the total opposite, like this sweetheart, like, oh, you're such a good book boyfriend. Like, oh, I love you. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. So <laughs> So today we're chatting about indie books. Um, so it's a good chance that you mentioned Chloe's because that's an indie book to, to start um do you have any recommendations to authors or people because when we think about indies we we get overwhelmed by like the amount of options that are out there um what can be your own starter pack like which ones were your like go-to gateways that you really you discover um within the indie publishing yeah I think you're totally right because I think even the romance book genre in general I mean it's so huge right and that it can be overwhelming to know where to start you know and and I think a lot of the traditionally published authors get most of the attention when there are so many great indie authors and um, on She Reads Romance books. I do have a list post on, I call it my like romance starter kit, <laughs> where mm-hmm. I list um, a number of book recommendations based on um, like the subgenre. Like if you like sports romance, try these titles, or if you like romantic suspense, try these titles. But um, a couple of my favorites. Let's see. I'll start with Kate Stewart. Mm-hmm. She is. She might be my own, my top favorite indie author because every one of her books I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Um, Drive is her love triangle, sort of focused on music in Nashville book, and I mean. I just can't put any of her books down. They're just mm-hmm. phenomenal. And they make pretty much my all-time favorite book lists, which is pretty rare. So I love Drive. Um, her Underdog series is uh, college romance books. Mm-hmm. And I loved The Guy in the Middle. He, it's sort of a f- football player turned boxer. And he sort of falls for the like ugly duckling kind of heroine. And I mean, I just highlighted so many phrases from that scenes from that book that I still like think about to this day I just loved it and then lastly her um trilogy that most recently came out flock was mm-hmm. book one exodus and the finish line have you read those no but they've been really popular in book talks <laughs> oh my gosh like it's, it's so seriously the, those books will just consume you and then after you're done you're like oh, 
I need to go back into that world. Like they are just phenomenal. Like a, the characters, the storyline, her writing, just, I loved it. So Kate Stewart is definitely one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see who else Penny Reed, I would say is a top indie author. She was probably one of the first indie authors that I read. Um, the Winston Brothers series, I just love and really hope gets made into a TV show at some point. It's like mm -hmm. small town romance with a little bit of this underlying story that goes through all of the seven books about this um, motorcycle club, you know, and it was just really cool, fun characters and neat stories, um, as well as her knitting in the series, knitting in the city series. Um, mm -hmm a group of women who are all very different, but they come together and they knit. And each of their books are, are really different, but you know, are connected as well. My favorite in that series was Love Hacked. Um, the heroine is a psychologist and she ends up just like going on all these dates and every date leaves crying because she's like psychoanalyzing them or whatever. And so she never can find this guy. And then she ends up, um, falling for this younger, he's 21 virgin hero. And their relationship was just really cool. And, you know, Penny Reed's all about smart romance. And so in that book, she, she talks about Bitcoin. So that was the first I'd ever heard of Bitcoin. So I'm learning about all this stuff too. So <laughs> it was oh, a great I book. To, I have to read this. I, I love something about like older her and um, younger men is by far like catnip for me like the more the older like, you know the, the age gap is all I'm all for it so are you really <laughs> yeah then you would yeah you would definitely like this one it's it's yeah because I don't know if the age well maybe the age gap is huge I mean she's definitely older than 21 but um they just were a really really good couple and just had these great conversations and like he would he she had to learn that she didn't have to fix him you know what I mean like yeah. um so it was really cool mm -hmm. that's really cool let's see should I keep going listing some more of my faves yeah um yeah. if people love sports romance mm -hmm. Megan Quinn mm -hmm. um she indie publishes though so she's doing a little bit more uh traditional publishing too but oh my gosh her Brentwood baseball boys series mm -hmm. I love I mean I actually would recommend not starting with the first one, The Locker Room. Yeah. I would go to book two and three, which are two of my all-time favorite books. Mm -hmm. Maybe go back to one at some point. It's sort of my least favorite. But the whole series, I just devoured because I love the banter that she writes <laughs> between her characters. So funny and um, great characters. Um, Jason in the lineup, I think is sort of like one of my all-time favorite book boyfriends he's just this you know unicorn of an awesome guy like has the full you know package if you will mm -hmm. um and she just came out with a new or just started a new hockey series the first book in that is called kiss and don't tell did you read that one no I did not know that she has a hockey series I'm like I'm all for it I had yes. it with the locker room because it had an eight-year time jump and I felt that there needed to be a second chance romance it should not be like eight years is a big enough time jump that requires some yes. more extra work and so that's like my issue but then I powered through and read the rest of the series and I was like oh they're fine it's just like those time jumps were like require more work <laughs> yes know? And it was like kind of, it it didn't feel good, you know, it, with that story. I was really kind of bummed by it. So mm -hmm. I hope people don't, yeah, it's just, so skip that one, read the other two, and then you'll yeah. come back to get the, that story. But um, the rest are really good. But the hockey one, oh my gosh. So I love, you know, Brentwood Boys. I'm like, oh, I got to hear all these guys' stories. So then she came out with Kiss and Don't Tell is the first one. And I loved it. But she sort of set the stage for all the other like hockey guys in that story. And I'm like, I need each of their stories. They sound so compelling. So I think she's going to come out with a second one soon. So love them. Yeah. Um, let's see another favorite. And she was probably another one of my first indie authors to explore was JT Geisinger. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you read any of hers? 
I started um, a mafia romance this week and then I put it down because I was I figured pick something up pick a college hockey no a regular hockey romance but um it's on my list of like mafia romance to try out yeah she's been writing those yeah those are maybe like five mafia romance books as of late but I really and I love those but I love her earlier works like um the wicked sexy series and okay. I think Wicked Sexy was the second book in that series and I was just pulled in. I'm normally not a romantic suspense kind of person, but this, what sort of fits that um, trope, but I was like, oh my gosh, I can't put this down. The heroine is this like badass um, hacker and she was just amazing and had the, this great like push pull with the um, hero. And it was just a really, really good book. Um, Melt for You was her like neighbors to lovers book with this rugby player um, and a girl who is really trying to get the attention of her boss, but doesn't really have the greatest self-esteem about her body and so forth. And so he's like trying to coach her like, you're wonderful. And this is how you can get his attention. But you know how those books go. He's like, wait a minute, why am I helping helping her to get this guy's attention? Well, I think she's amazing. And yeah, um, that was definitely one of my all time favorite books too. So I'm adding she, <laughs> yeah. So any of the, I mean, any of these authors, they're kind of like my one click indie authors for sure. Um, yeah. A few like new people I'm finding indies that maybe aren't so popular. Um, I don't even know who this woman is. I think it's even a pen name, but Bethany James, mm-hmm. she wrote, and I, and I, I think I've read this book five times and I, and I recommend it all the time for people who like erotic romance Mm -hmm. or who want to try out erotic romance, see if it's their thing. It's a shorter book. It's not quite novella size, just maybe a little bit bigger, but it's called my personal bad boy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's about this girl who puts out this personal ad, like AKA Craigslist in a way looking for, I mean, who in the heck would do that this day and age? But anyway, she puts out this ad to find someone to help her like explore her sexuality. Right. And so Mm -hmm. she meets this guy and, you know, it's true erotic romance, which really they end up falling in love based on their like meetups, you know, and what they do. But I just thought the writing was great. Um, it was such a good intro to erotic romance for me. Um, the characters I thought were really had sort of great backstories. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's always one that I recommend. And she, she wrote that one, Bethany James. And then she wrote this other series of three called watch watching in watched. (laughs) Obviously it's all about like voyeurism, but I don't think she's written any other books since, since these, cause I'm always like, are you writing more? Come on, let me see. (laughs) Um, But those, all three of those are really great too. Um, Mm if someone's sort of in the, you know, interested in voyeurism, they were pretty hot and steamy, but not maybe as quite as my personal bad boy. So Bethany James. Yeah. And then um, one of my favorite MM romance authors, have you read um, Nev Wilder at all? Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> she, um, she's writ- wrote this series um college MM romance Mm -hmm. um books started with the book want me and literally this book I was like this book is going to catch on fire the more scenes that I read because they just kept getting more and more like hot between these two guys who were college roommates you know one you know is supposedly straight but then things sort of change and you know they're exploring and it was just like Oh, fanning myself <laughs> reading this whole story. And then the other books in the series are pretty cool too. So Nev Wilder is kind of those indie authors that I just happened to come upon and loved her work. So I love this. I love this. Like I'm finding new authors for me to discover. <laughs> and that's the whole point of this podcast. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I, tr- yeah. I don't, sorry to interrupt. I try to do that like every month, either with the challenge, my Romans book reading challenge or something to really just, you know, try somebody new because there are so many, um, that it's fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. So how do you find recommendations? Like how do you get your books like to figure out what books to read? Do you follow the algorithm on Amazon? 